Hi everyone, welcome. This is episode one of Strength Through the Battle. And let me tell you, we are at war. We are all at war right now. And it's not just you, it's not just me, it is everyone. Every person on earth is either on one side or on another. There is no Switzerland in this war that's taking place. There is no natural or neutral zone in this war. We are at war. Jesus made it quite clear that if you are not with him, then you are standing against him. If you are a Christian, you are a soldier in the spiritual army of Christ, and you are at war with the spiritual forces of evil that control this world. Make no mistake, my friends, about it, okay? This is a battle for your life. There are two opposing forces arrayed against one another with the sole purpose of either your salvation or your destruction. But this is a spiritual war. It is a battle for the heart and the mind of people, and the battleground is the spirit and the mind. So if we are soldiers in a spiritual war, we need the spiritual weapons and the armor to wage the war. A soldier does not go into a war zone unprotected and without the right weapon to wage war against the enemy. Likewise, my friends, we have been provided with the spiritual weapons and the spiritual armor to both protect ourselves against the attacks of the enemy and to fight back and overcome as this war is waging. One of the key things we must remember as we wage this war is to take control of our thoughts. Oh, man, I can't emphasize that enough. I cannot emphasize how important it is to surrender every single thought and place control over it under the feet of Jesus. That is how we do it. We don't hold on to them here because then they're going to linger onto our heart and then we are broken. We are breaking down in the middle of the war that we are taking place in right now. Okay? We are setting our mind in the things of the Spirit. We are on the side of God. And the armor of God is designed to help us do just that. Okay? There are seven weapons of spiritual warfare in the armor that we have been given. If we are to win the battle, we must fully and completely dress the entire armor of God on us. We, mu we must know what the armor is. We must know what each one of those pieces does and how it protects us and enables us to fight. And fortunately, fortunately for us, the Holy Spirit helps us in many ways as we, as we fight this war. So let's break down the armor and weapons of spiritual warfare so that you can be fully armed, ready and able to fight and win this war through the power of Jesus Christ and the working of the Holy Spirit in you. Prepare to be dressed. We are putting the full armor of God on. Every piece is important and must be understood. We are about to go into our study, okay? Luke 11, 21 through 23 tells us, For when a strong man is fully armed and guarded in his palace, his possessions are safe. Until someone even stronger attacks and overpowers him, strips him of his weapons and carries off his belongings. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of unseen worlds and against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the times of evil. Then after the battling firm, stand your ground putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of this, hold up the shield of faith so that the feet to stop every fury arrow of the devil. Put on the salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times on every occasion, every occasion. Not whenever you feel like it, not when it seems like it's right for you. On every occasion, pray. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers. For all 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. We are humans, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons to worldly, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture the rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. Romans 8, 1 through 8 tells us that, 
So now there is no condemn condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you. It has freed you, my friends, from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did not do so that the just requirements of the law would be fully satisfied for us, who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that are pleasing to the spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind will lead to death, but letting the spirit control your mind it will lead to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never truly please God. In Romans 8, 26, 27, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we do not know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows that the spirit is saying for the spirit pleads for us in harmony with god's own will so even when you don't know what to pray for even when you're going through a battle even when your mind is taking over but you know you should be surrendering it to god and you go and you kneel and you humble yourself before him and you have no words to say and you're just weeping crying groaning the spirit will activate and it will intercede on your behalf with god all you have to do is be willing all you need to do is surrender, consistent surrender to God and to what God is asking of us. God is asking us to give him all of us, not parts of us. Not, you see, Jesus prepared his disciples for everything, including war. They saw him casting out demons. In fact, he actually sent them all out to go do the exact same thing. But before he sent them out, he charged them to become wise as serpents, yet innocent and harmless as doves. This fusion of divine wisdom and Christ-like innocence is the tap root of all spiritual victory. Indeed, we can defeat the enemy, but wisdom must precede warfare and virtue must come before the victory. We must learn the ways of God, think with wisdom. We must be pure of heart that we may see God and gain his discernment. Let us close in prayer. Almighty God, give us your wisdom in all situations as you begin to write in our heart what is true, what is honorable, right, pure, lovely, excellent, and worthy of praise, that we may dwell on these things constantly as we contend by your grace against evil and offer oppression, no peace in your name we pray. Almighty God, mighty God, move and equip us with your full armor to continue to fight this fight, Lord Father. For you, my God, we trust in you. We trust in your strength. We trust in your courage. We trust in your word, my God. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Um, that is all I have written down for today. I will have another study tomorrow. Um, I love you all. God loves you all so much more. Remember to keep on that armor. Remember to pray it on you every day. This is a serious war we are in. There is no time to be sissy lalas as my pastors say, okay? We must stand strong. We must stand in the word of God and unite, okay? Stay in prayer. Don't stop praying. Whatever you do, do not stop praying. I love you. God bless you. Until tomorrow.